All right, welcome to the fifth installment of the WMC Porchcast. We're here today at Casa de Ramsey. Hugh and Rose were nice enough to lend us their porch for this evening's show. Uh, today, we really got a great show where we dive into the origin story of Wilchester Men's Club. You know, guys, I love a good origin story. Whether it's Michael Dell and him building computers in his college dorm room or you know, that story of Matthew McConaughey, you know, who makes his big break in Dazed and Confused, or, you know, I'm sitting there with my kids watching origin stories of some Marvel movie. Uh, you know, those, hearing those stories excite me. And I think it's that because I want to know where the organization begins. And that's why we're here today, because I know that where it is today, and that's going to influence where it goes tomorrow. So today we're gonna to be diving into this topic with a few of the original WMC board members, the OGs of the hood, uh, the original WMC way, way, way back in 2010. And personally, I'm excited about this because it takes me back to moving into the hood in 2012 and making it out to my first happy hour, putting, it, putting that, that name tag on, meeting a ton of new guys and finding more out more about WMC. And now having that perspective 14 years later and to see how incredible this, well, quite frankly, it's the flagship men's club in West Houston and the best organization I've been involved in. Now we've got incredible social events, athletic tournaments, family focused service events, and donating over $500,000 to giving partners and other local charities in such a short period of time. It's nothing short of incredible. So, uh, without, without further, further ado, I want to make some introductions before we get started. So, Paul? Paul Oliphant, uh, been in the neighborhood since, wow, 2001. So, been here quite some time. Graduated three boys out of Stratford and got a fourth one there right now. Awesome. Uh, the J.R. Ewing of Fayetteville, Arkansas, oh, yeah. Jeff Gentile. <laughs> so, uh, Jeff Gentile, uh, we've been here since 2006, uh, graduated three kids out of Stratford, the last one just a few months ago. So the nest is now empty. Uh, when we started men's club, our oldest was nine and our youngest was four. So yeah, come a long way. Awesome. Jake. Jake Emery, uh, first president and I guess founder of the men's club, been in Wilchester for 19 years, two different homes. Three, uh, two, two kids through Stratford so far and two more still there. Awesome. Thanks, Jake. And thank you all for being here. So now let me give you all a quick preview of tonight's show. First, we're going to be discussing the, those humble beginnings of WMC and the mission of doing good in the hood. Second quarter is going to be all about the guys getting together for the first happy hours and how we grew this or how they grew this organization. And then we're going to have halftime. Uh, we're going to have our host, Hugh Ramsey. He's one of the Iron Chefs of Wilchester. Uh, he's going to treat us with his culinary talents, and he's going to kill it. And quite frankly, he might be related to Gordon Ramsey. This stuff is incredible. Uh, listen, and then we're going to go third quarter. We're going to get into the nonprofit aspect of WMC, uh, the fundraising and some of those early supporters. And then finally, we're going to wrap it up with the neighborhood's favorite topic, which is Pecan Bowl. Uh, it's the flagship event of WMC, and it's going to be exciting to hear about how that started. Uh, then maybe we even get overtime where we're going to be hearing some of the funniest and best moments from the last 14 years. So once again, thanks, Hugh and Rose, for your hospitality, and let's jump in. On the WMC Porchcast, we will dive into current events within the Wilchester Men's Club and goings-on within the neighborhood, all in support of our mission of doing good. All right, guys, we're going to get in the first quarter here, and I know the, the members, we got over 500 of them, and a lot of them want to know, how, how did we get to this place? Jake, you said you're first president here, and that's incredible. Where did the idea of WMC come from and, you know, the first members, the mission, all that sort of stuff? Well, so the idea came from, I got invited by some other guys from the neighborhood to a Christ the King event where it was steak night. And you bring your own steak to the event. They had grills and they had all of the sides. So a bunch of hot grills, a bunch of guys that all had their own steak and seasonings there cooked them up it was a bunch of fellowship 
um, good times. And I said, hey, I got back with some of the guys. And some of the guys from the neighborhood, uh, Batch Batchelder, has since moved. Scott Ashmore, I'm sure there's others that I'm leaving out, but are, were some of the original Wilchester Men's Club members. I said, hey, I think this would be a great idea. We could, we could get a bunch of guys together to do this. Turns out I have a, a grill built that is still standing up there for 14 still years. Still is, yep. It's got a, you know, it, it's it's had a bottom replaced in it, but <laughs> the, the, the thing keeps burning great food. And um, we uh, had the first event, and it was steak night. Um, Rick Hirsch provided us with some 16-ounce bone-in ribeyes, and we had, I think, baked potatoes and beans and... There was a whole bunch of cases of beer, and I think the first event, you know, had no idea how many guys we would get back then. Uh, Evite, that's not as cool anymore, but we used to send out Evites. Um, it was probably one of my biggest pains that we had to do <laughs> because, you know, you wouldn't get people to respond, and then you'd reach out to people again, multiple emails. But I think we had 67 guys or something like that at the first event. Um, and I like to say that, Hey, we started the first event on fire because there was a fire on St. Mary's and 50 dudes had to run down there and help put the fire out oh, cool. on, on St. Mary's yeah. for the, the house that caught on fire. Uh, and what, what, so, what year was that? 2010. 2010. Yeah. Yeah. So there was a fire at the first happy hour and y'all, I, I mean, just did what you had to do. Fire at the first happy hour, the second happy hour, a rollover BMW right. at the corner of Wilchester. Mark had almost cut it off at that point. Yeah. Yeah. We we're, 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 <laughs> we're like, almost hey guys, more. Get more. It almost, we were almost not where we were, are today <laughs> yeah. with uh, that kind of. Uh, but I will tell you that, uh, that that first event has kind of been to where it led to things now where we all went down there to like everybody's phone started ringing. Everybody goes down there to help put this fire out. Um, and we literally did have to help put them. I mean, there were guys that were, had garden hoses. There were, there, I mean, I literally turned the fire hydrant on with a wrench from the, the fire department guys. So it's, I mean, we, we started out on fire. You guys have taken it even further. <laughs> That's incredible. Uh, Jeff, were you there too? Or uh, are you? Hose in hand, or are you rescue kids out of trees? I mean, I was not at that happy hour. I've heard about it a thousand times. It's better <laughs> every time. Um, but I wasn't at that first one. But got linked up with Jake. Um, you know, at some point after kind of the first few happy hours, and then we started talking about just the momentum of guys coming in. We started collecting emails. Every Indian princess baseball team, soccer team, dance club distribution list started collecting emails and contacting more and more guys hey we're doing this thing and again guys are looking for an outlet right you had mom's clubs book clubs bunko all the things that the moms yeah kindergarten happy years all that stuff and the dudes were like we could use something too um and yeah and it just it took on a life of its own so what about the 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 logo the i mean the 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 phrase doing good in the hood how'd that get started i i mean Go ahead. Uh, I mean, I, I, I think the the logo, there's there's a few of them, um, but... The, there was about a dozen. Yeah, but, <laughs> I mean, a lot of iterations of the logo that that we we tried. I mean, there's it's been everything from doing stuff from Excel to have having some of my employees that do design stuff uh, come up with it. And I'm laughing because I was digging through my archives today found this board meeting agenda from January 9th, 2014, and it actually has logo yeah. question mark. Uh, so this, and so, and so this, all so so this, this logo came, about two years. this logo came much later. I mean, yeah. we had three years of just a dudes getting together, hanging a w. out. <laughs> a W. That's, that's what it was. Yeah. Well, I think at the beginning, we also wrestled with, what do we call it? I think we, like, it wasn't just the Wilchester Men's Club out of the gate, like, we have to name this thing. I may have had that on here. Look. Um, and we, I think we went through uh, the men's club, the West Side Men's, West Houston Men's yeah, Club. Yeah, that, that didn't go over well. All of the things. Um, 
And then we landed on Wilchester because it seemed to be the common denominator for the people in the proximity of who we were all hanging out with in the uh, sports teams and Indian Prince and stuff. And so we just landed on the Wilchester Men's Club. And so the, I think that, what do we call ourselves? Okay, what's the thing? And then how did we begin? And it was really kids that got that were that were zoned to Wilchester Elementary were the dads who got invited to to join the club. I've never said no to more people of can I come to your neighborhood happy hour? Yeah. <laughs> no. no. Are you no, going to Wilchester? No. Sorry. Sorry. Thanks. But no thanks. So. That's incredible. I, and so, Paul, how'd you get involved in so, all this? I, mean, um, I, I I got called in. I guess when when uh, it was getting close to becoming a five hundred one c three. I had been on a five hundred one c three board and and um, started getting questions. It was early two thousand fourteen, uh, and it was when they needed an adult in the room. <laughs> Or at least somebody to count the money. He's um, not wrong. He's not wrong. We had a lot of money in an envelope. Yeah, a lot of money in the envelope, and, and they started going, okay, what do we do with this? And so um, I got brought in 2014-ish, and, um, you know, it was like, okay, we got to do something with this. And uh, I think I started by looking at some of the bylaws and stuff, and, and it was when I think Steve Vieira was, was uh, running kind of point on getting it applied for as a 501c3. And um, um, kind of over the next six months, then I ended up joining the board and kind of was was in, was part of that initial, okay, putting together kind of a formal um, board for a not-for-profit, you know, yeah. so that we could actually call ourselves a not-for-profit and people could give money and put it on their tax return as tax deductible. And uh, I was looking at emails and stuff, and there was one email back from you, and it was like, Okay, I know we're doing this 501c3 thing, but I don't want to make it too, you know, too formal, which which goes along with the uh, hand drawn the agenda. Agenda, right there. <laughs> yeah. So I, I kind of want to move into the, our second quarter here, and you know, kind of talking about the growing of the organization, you know, getting guys together, getting a board together. I mean, and how all that process started. I mean, to really take it from hanging out at the pool cooking steaks, having beers, fighting fires to like more of a, I mean, again, the, having the adult in the room. And, and so how, how did that all start? Well, I mean, honestly, it was just getting me and the five best buds in the neighborhood I had together to say every, and, and people I knew that would lend a hand in doing it. Uh, because the, the, the effort in the beginning was, I mean, it was y y what you guys have done now. Y'all have a whole lot more help. And at, at one point it was six of us that, I mean, it was, it was, Hey, we're going to do a happy hour next, next month on Tuesday, the 12th, you know, and, and it was a text string and, and then it was like, okay, who's going to do the Evite? And, yeah. and then an Evite goes out and it's like, okay. And look, like, I'd be remiss if we didn't mention Doug Goodson, Steve Vieira, Rick Bird, and the three of us. So that's the original. Yeah board uh and you were looking for doers guys that had yeah. ideas doers um and that kind of were had some you know thoughts about what we could do with with the organization i so. mean it was who, who's gonna make the costco run for beer who's gonna make the run for that's before we started getting some of the other you know sponsors that we had come in with like john hampton and spindle tap and back in the mm -hmm. day um so it was that, great to have that key group of guys and then, you know, growing it from there. I mean, was there, like, getting the word out and all that sort of stuff just, I mean, truly organic? It was. Yeah. So, again, we also wanted to make sure we had guys that had different friend groups. Like, we were all, we were close, but we all didn't necessarily run the same friend circles because, you know, Doug's um, not our age and the, the young guys like me. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, oh cut that. <laughs> Well, he's not. We don't have a lie detector. It's not uh, raining out here. So as the young guy in the group, I'm like, I sure I know a lot of younger folks. Um, Good thing you had the hat on. <laughs> and uh, yeah. you look way younger. And uh, his oh hair matches gosh. the hat. It's getting, it's getting out in here. I forgot where, <laughs> for, where I was going. I'm um, actually younger than you. But, so. but what I'll say is, so over time, you know, I'm a, I'm, I became the community, the email guy. Like I was just the email emailer. Guy. And those yeah, are some so classic emails. It was just, I collected all the email addresses, kept the distribution list. I, I you know, managed all this thing, you know, 
uh, manual in Excel and uh, just send emails. Like, I, I, people got pissed off. Like, I email, hey, come in happy hour. Like, like Jake said, we use this thing called Evite, and I would Evite them, and the re Evite reminder and the four hour reminder, and trying to get the right numbers. Hey, we get Jake's going to get food at the at Costco. We need the right numbers. Like, like I was whipping people with emails, and um, over time, it just guys invited guys. It, it became what you mentioned earlier, just a, a vehicle to. To, to meet new folks in the neighborhood when you moved in. Um, and so I think just guys invited guys and you just, as with everything in this, it's taken life of its own. This is, this was our, our, you know, when we even get, got started, this was the one episode we wanted to do like this to just hear and to talk about where all, you know, where, all, where the hell did this come from? I mean, this is truly, um, you know, continue to grow and you know, bringing in new guys and, and all that sort of stuff. So it's been, it's been a ton of fun to be a part but of. But there's, it's, a, a, it's originally the happy hours were pay as you go. So you yeah. show up. So it's, e buy goes out 20 bucks, bring, bring your 20 bucks cash. It definitely was cash. Cause that was part of the, uh, the envelope we'll get to the, that we had to take to frost, but, um, 20 bucks cash and come pay your money. And uh, yeah, it's, it's, Hey, have a great meal, drink as many beers as you can. Uh, and don't blame us. Some for things don't change. Some things no, don't I, change. I absolutely. But there, I mean, in those early days, there were, there were many times that we thought we, we had it. It was 6.7 beers per man. That, <laughs> that, that, that was the number. That was our number. <laughs> it was 6.7 beers per man. And that's what we bought. And you know, some people, some people drink two, some people drink 11. Um, at an average, I mean, this is science here. Right? Yeah, like it, it is science, and and this science it didn't lie. Um, now a few times it did, and we you know we have to make a make a run up to the convenience store. I've been oh there. back when we had the debit card, and like who can drive? Here's the pin number to the mental debit card. What time only is it? Only buy it's beer. Open. Yeah, only buy beer and nothing else. And. Oh, the, oh yeah. Yeah, we only had beer back then. You guys are taking the whole, the whole next level. But... Debit card. Yeah. I love that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but then, but then somebody came up with the membership idea. I don't. Remember well, it, I think it was me, and then yeah. it was like, hey, we can start. We if we had a membership, we could we could get a. It would simplify trust. it for the accountant. Right, and the and 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 so everyone started. We then we sold these memberships, and we sold many more memberships than we did, and it was that was the first gear i think besides yeah. pecan bowl gear because you only got pecan bowl beer if gear if you were in pecan bowl you got so we had the uh beer. the we had the Flip. arctic um wilchester men i wish i had one but the arctic wilchester men club men's club 32 ounce tumbler oh the grizzly the grizzly the yeah grizzly. i'm sorry the oh grizzly. i still have grizzly. used it all the time yeah, it, back when i only had one of them and now i have a you probably portable. have a case of them. yeah i have a case of them now like crystal. I think there's still more <laughs> up i bet i bring yeah. them out for christmas it is i mean it is uh it, it is full the gift so, that keeps on giving no 100 all right guys we're gonna move to halftime or you know for tonight we're gonna call it the blue plate special here so we have the iron chef that's cold he is He's getting things ready. Uh, he is. Um, you thought about that all day. Uh, <laughs> Jamie told me. I was going to say we were going to have Geritol as our, uh, as our tasting tonight. Straw. She told me not Somebody's to. Somebody's going to have to get up. <laughs> but, you go, uh, I got you. I got you. I got you. <laughs> Where did you leave your walker? Where is Walker? <laughs> it is. So we have a chef's tasting uh, menu tonight, uh, an amuse-bouche, or he's ready to go. Uh, we've got a smoky whiskey, uh, a smoky bourbon, rather, and a. we always do this on the, on the porch cast. We'll have a, a, a tasting of some sort. Yeah. We've done four Woo! three ways, or actually four ways. Love three ways. Uh, Oryx, especially. PG. I've never had four ways. Brown and garlic. Fantastic. Uh, yeah. The, Thank so, you. This is what we were talking about. Thank the, you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Sorry. Huge. 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 <laughs> Huge. Huge. <laughs> Are we missing something? <laughs> the. the Got it. Right. What, what, that's works as well? All of it? All La uh, on the last episode, uh, oh my goodness! Wow, Hugh brought in uh, yellowfin tuna that he prepared sashimi 
style with a uh, glaze on it. Hugh, this is fantastic. Incredible. Yeah, tender on his. Holy smokes. Tender. Mm. Wow. My favorite part of the horse cast or is the halftime. And with boot, I love that. Oh my God. Yeah. Oh, chili paste that? on it. Oh, it's yeah. like a chili paste. Homemade or? You make this. You uh, enjoy that chili? Chili crisp peanut butter at the Japanese station. That is so like good. Like Ranch Market 99 or uh, what's that? Do they have it? It's Chinese. It's, uh, it's called chili crisp. Uh, Lam Gado. Okay, okay. Look at it. Dude, this is huge. You got it. Me hello? What did you say? <laughs> Could have been. That's going to get cut. You know, one of my favorite things about the Happy Hours has been the uh, the washers. And who made the first washer boards? And uh, oh, God. <laughs> I feel there's a story. I, well, I will tell you when that it's funny you asked about who made the first washer boards because I had to, I, I've been moving my office from one place to another, and I moved about 20 of them the other day that are still in my shop. So if anybody needs some single hole washer boards, um, I, give me a call. Nice. Yeah. Nice. You know, and so food's been a huge part of the happy hours as well. You talked about the, uh, you talked about all of the, the steak nights and that sort of thing. You know, what were the other things that y'all threw on the grill? Was it, cause I know it, it went from, you, know, you were, t you guys were talking about before the show, cooking it yourself. Then we moved to catering. Now we're kind of back to cooking it yourself. Was there. So, because Hugh is going to be our social chair and responsible for the happy hour. So we're always looking for food ideas, that sort of thing. Well, uh, I mean, just to, this is again, back from 14. Um, we had, uh, in February we had yard bird. So by the way, we were meeting once a month for the, I think it was every month for the first two years. And then we started scaling it back to happy hours once a month. Yeah, happy yeah. Uh, at Wilchester Men's Club. We didn't have the events the first couple of years. Correct. Uh, okay. So we had yard bird, which was grilled chicken. Uh, we had crawfish, ribeyes. Um, back to school night was filet. And um, man. And and we had it. Times to, are tough now. Yeah. Yeah. We well, the filets. Well, we had. We had <laughs> I, I know. I know. Our first ladies' night was was. Filet, um, double cut pork chops. I mean, I remember because I went and bought it all at Rice Up Oh, and nice. so, yeah, back when they had the five ninety nine filet deal, that's why we had filets. Um, <laughs> and uh, what's it? We, we had we had a we had a we had a fish fry. So there were times I think Doug, uh, Steve, and I made the trip. That ha I think that happened three different years that we went to Calcasieu and stayed at the oh, nice. Nugget and went and fished and we caught all of the fish that we caught. Mm -hmm. One year, I think we had to subsidize the fish mm -hmm. a little bit from other people's freezers, but um, that was the other reason why we became a 501c3, so those could be tax deductible. <laughs> Tim, the, we are getting ideas here. This is this is a great brainstorming yeah. session. So, I, I do want to move to the third quarter. Jake, uh, Jake still has not uh, something he may try to file an expense report for. <laughs> uh, I, I, I do. I think I you do. have some reimbursement. It's hot. Duty. This bourbon's hot. So, so we're going to move to the third quarter, which is the financial piece. So again, big part. I'm not, I'm not, a, not, a, not a tremendous focus, but certainly a part of the men's club has been the ability to give back monetarily to the community and West Houston and our little micro community uh, as well. So, how did that how did that start so they were doing these happy hours and bringing in a lot of cash i mean and and i think jeff was taking it home and sticking it under his mattress and and um <laughs> safe they, place they, it's it, safe place it's an fdic yeah. secured at that point <laughs> and um uh so they brought me onto the board and i had a pre-existing relationship from another uh from another organization with Frost. And I said, hey, I think Frost would be a great place. There's one down at Town & Country. Um, you know, let's go, you know, open an account and, uh, you know, make it official. And so Jeff and I went down to Frost at Town & Country and 
went in and, you know, it was literally with an envelope, but it was probably five or six grand in, five grand. in tens and twenties um, in an envelope. Small unmarked bills. I mean, it's fine. That, so, uh, some of it smelt funny. Yeah. But, and, and, mind your own You know, might have been, so. might have been saturated, but, uh, you know, we, we go up to the counter, hey, we need to, and I think we had our organization doc, uh, you know, papers at that point in time and and went up to the desk and said, hey, you know, we need to set up an account and um, said, um, they said, okay, and, and we started filling out the paperwork and this young lady came out, uh, Karen was her name, and, um, you know, and then Jeff kind of but on, she was like, okay, what, you know, what do you guys need to do? Or, you know, tell me a little bit about this organization. Cause they were going, okay, there's somebody out in the, you know, I could envision the people, at the desk going back and saying, Hey, there's like two guys and they've got like, you know, five, $6,000 of cash, <laughs> you know, and they want to open up an account. We were big and it, time. And it's called <laughs> the men's club. <laughs> and, then, so, and then, so she comes out and, and asks us, you know, and, and it was kind of, April, May, and this was before the second, first or second washer fest. What was uh, cool is I think we had we had a bunch of cash in the first couple of years, and we weren't trying, right? Yeah, we were asking for money. Jake would go buy a bunch of stuff at Costco. We'd collect cash. We'd reimburse him, and the net we just you know threw in the envelope, and we just kept growing and growing, and got to the point where like we should. Like, there's something here, right? There, 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 yeah. There's something here, and um, so I think that began the discussions of, can this be something bigger? I do remember we were sitting in Jake's backyard. And it was like bird, Vieira, me, Jake. And I think this is before, I mean, this may have been like 2012, like when we first started saying, okay, we should, um, make this formal. Uh, I remember saying to one of them, just imagine if we had like 10 grand and we could like do a scholarship. Just imagine if we had 10 grand in the bank. Like I was thinking, I was thinking big, 10 <laughs> brand, right? Um, and just, I remember us saying, yeah, just this could be a thing. And again, yeah. we weren't trying, like sponsorships weren't a thing yet. We just had some cash and um, and that, and then, then the creativity, I think started, the financial creativity started as far as how can we truly monetize it with memberships, with sponsorships, yeah, some more events. And that just, again, everything just kind of caught on from there. Well, and then didn't care and provide, well, and offered- it was- yeah, it was that it was that kind of line that Jeff gave her that she was like, "Hey, you know, we want to we want to get to know you." You know, we we said, you know, we live all of you know a half mile away, yeah. and and she's like, you know, tell us how we can get involved. And so we set up the account. They actually gave us, you know, I mean, five grand was the first, yeah. like really meaningful sponsorship. Yeah, yeah, oh, and then well, and Frost Bank. like Frost six yeah. months six months no, later. Hey, listen, then, there's still a sponsor today. Yeah, it's still. Make it out there. Shout out to Frost Bank. No. Shout out. How we do this. Yeah, and, and so, and she came out to the very, the first one they sponsored, it was either the first or second uh, Washer Fest. She throughout the inaugural. The, it, throughout the inaugural first, uh, Washer Toss. Washers, and, and, you know, and then that was, that was kind of how we started that relationship with Frost, and it was really just kind of a random, um, you know, I think she was more kind of <laughs> interested of who these guys are that have you know, 5,000 in small unmarked bills <laughs> trying yeah, to do a deposit. Like my last year, just roll, when I was rolling off, Bill Enzer and I went and had lunch with Linda at Westside. That's, That's great. And she's like, yeah, I'll stroke you a 10 grand check. I mean, just, again, I think people heard about it, they saw about it, they saw opportunities to, this is, like, this is a very attractive neighborhood. Yeah. Demographic, people want to be part of what's going on here. Um, they see opportunities just for partnerships and relationships. And I think the men's club has over time become a really cool vehicle to exposure and and for businesses to you know promote themselves. It's it's been really cool. And and I'd say some of the neat fundraising activities that that we saw during some of those early years, um, there was um, a young man who was uh, who was a middle schooler at the time and and died, and the men's club raised up a that that that's when we started really saying what are we going to do with all this money because i think at that point we were already a charitable organization yeah we were right? charitable by that time so but but the the warren barfield yeah and, and we we was... got they we we the men's club uh initiated a a neighborhood wide we put blue ribbons on all of the the lamps in in wilchester and trees around uh, the neighborhood and sent out a a, a a 
neighborhood wide email. And Steve, and Steve Vier, who's who was one of the founders, he um he had this concept called the Roundup. So come to the happy hour. It's twenty bucks. All you yeah. know, I can drink. But here's what happened. Here's a family in need. If you want to round up your twenty bucks, and so we got we got right up to forty. Hundred up to hundred, a grand. <laughs> yeah. Like, and so I think we we raised. I think I want to say, and I have it somewhere, like eighteen grand. Yeah, 20, at that happy grand hour, at that happy hour, at that happy hour. And there was, there was a matching gift from a from a sponsor. Yeah. The so yeah, it just um, and I, it's funny uh, the this the neighbors in need. So the Christie family. So Jeff Christie, you guys may know Zach Christie. He's a, a high school or a Stratford. Um, so but junior, I mean junior, will be junior. Um, he lives at the corner of the neighborhood. So right at Yorkchester and Memorial. They're yeah. the house on the right when you're driving out. His wife uh, passed away of cancer early on, and the, uh, I have this $300 Christie family. That was the first neighbors in need. And we that said, was literally gonna, to get their yard moved. We're going to pay for the yard guy for a year just so that's the last yeah. thing he has to worry about. Like he, you know, And so that was our first neighbors in need, and that, again, took on you know a really cool aspect because I think yeah, for, all the thing, for all the all right. the things the men's club does, that probably is the single most rewarding yeah, and, and then 2016, the shooting over at the gas station, and Gene Lipscomb was the the gentleman that was shot in his car, and he had a daughter that had gone to Rumble, and we did a scholarship we, for them. We donated uh, scholarship money, and that's actually one of them. That, I mean, I still kind of get chills. She, she, the daughter and the mom wrote the men's club a thank you note that I still have, and um, you know, just thanking us that's for awesome. for the the donation and for thinking of their their husband and their time in need. And that was, you know, truly a meaningful, uh, response. Like that, that was the reason why I, I personally got involved was because of the neighbors in need and the giving partners aspect of what this organization does. I mean, it's by far, I mean, listen, the happy hour is a great fellowship, the camaraderie, all that, but the service and the, the, that piece of it to be that conduit, that vehicle is incredible and i this past year we went to sbef um which spring ranch educational foundation we do scholarships there and um i, I believe and again i'm paraphrasing i wasn't there but i believe the quote was how can one group drink so much and raise so much money at the same time and uh make and it make a shirt <laughs> make a shirt <laughs> Listen, I, but, but it is, it's, it's truly incredible. So, so and, and, and that's actually a time where I can say thank you back to the men's club. Cause at least one of, I think my oldest got a men's club scholarship. Right. And so, um, Jeff, I'm not only, I'm not one of us, no, okay. no, 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 not, not Jeff and I, awkward. I'm not only a men's club. <laughs> hey, where's the, uh, Gentile hired just putting out there, uh, two founding members that didn't get one. And he is. Sure all the other, <laughs> we're pretty sure all the others did. Only all right, we're going to the fourth quarter. Okay, that. we're going <laughs> three grand. Hey, the, the clock, clock ran out. Clock yeah, ran yeah, out. But, that's it. But John, real quick, it, yeah. it, it just it, it just goes to show how how good of a group of dudes there are yeah. in this neighborhood. That even from back then, I mean, we've been through the the harvey stuff and and we were going in oh my gosh and like the men's wading, club bought a bunch wading of through you know stuff uh, water for horrible water water is the um, official term oh, and, we were and, where you were waiting even through. even to wait a hundred guys barrel, Chester elementary ready to go out and deploy well we did we had we had a we, we had a hotline one. for hey someone's trapped here we need this this and there was guys that would go out uh, and we had up, bought equipment up until and... two and a half weeks ago that were you know there's a group of guys that there were, I, I'm sure there were other people out, but there were 12 to 15 guys that were going in with chainsaws and clearing people's yeah. streets and driveways and stuff. I mean, you know, it, at some point it's going to be your time yep. that you're going to need it. And no one, no one's looking for anything. They're just looking to help. Uh, so again, shifting gears to the, the pecan bowl. All right. Fourth quarter. Uh, we are this Mr. Pecan, bowl. Mr. Well, Mr. Mr. Pecan bowl. Really? I didn't say that. Wow. <laughs> very, very humble. Very, very humble. Uh, okay. Let's let's talk about Pecan Bowl here. You know, where it began. How did it start? You know, we're at Pecan Bowl 13, 14, 14 this year. Um, who wants to kick this Well, Je so Jeff and I have mutually agreed that it's both of our ideas. <laughs> um, 
uh, <laughs> my my story is is that oh it God. started on a um, an Indian princess trip that several guys were part of, and we played a flag football game. Or well, actually, it wasn't flag; it was touch on a tennis court at um, I don't know whatever the camp is at at, at Lake Olympia. And so. Any, any Making this up as you go? No, I'm not. Okay. I'm not. <laughs> but, 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 but I will say never that. Get, so, never let so the in the way of a good story. We came Come back on. from that, and Jeff and I, we, we, we have uh, again decided to agree <laughs> to disagree, and it, 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 and I will say that we, we both talked about it, and um, we both came up with the idea for Pecombo. So. At the same time. <laughs> at the same time, he said. <laughs> It's like lightning striking. Yeah, what Jake said. Why pecan? <laughs> yeah. So, uh, so, uh, state tree of Texas. All right. Pecan. Pecan tree. That's it. All right. So, thinking about what we called, we thought we thought about like the north south uh, bowl, like so we the different okay. names, and we think you know blue bond and thing, and we just thought pecan, and then I was working with we were trying to make sure it's for the second year, and said. Com looks like a football. Throw some laces on it. Yeah, and it, it just it, and it, 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 looked, yeah. it looked really cool. It looked really cool. And, and we it have does. It, it, it still does. Tell your story, so it's fine. So, um, dude, what Jake said. What Jake said. No, it's not. It's it not. Je- it's Christine, we, we both that we we both came up with the idea we did. of per It, combo. it was a mutual my, like thing. We group. we both thought it about it separately. Like because I, I originally thought about it as a. Like, dad and sons deal okay like, it'd be fun to have a new year's day and then i'm like yeah. i'm like well screw the kids like they'll be fun for dads and i talked to jj right like, i'm thinking the same thing and then we just put our heads together and so combo one yeah. north of shell it, it was south. let's see the map well break was, out the map it was northwest versus southeast gotcha i met are we, are we good there yeah. tim <laughs> yeah so it was northwest versus southeast and we and we had a um this is for combo like three. We had to, uh, we had to, is, we, we had to draw. Like, but, uh, more people were interested. Yeah. So, but really quick, it was black versus white. Black shirts versus white shirts. Okay. Guys wore their pit stained under, sh- you know, <laughs> dress shirts from work. It was. It was well it before. Was uh, there's. We Doug had paid, started sponsoring the North. We paid two to buy guys. Uh, we paid two guys. Uh, your neighbors to referee. Oh, uh, Mark Story, Batch Batch Elder. Two neighborhood guys who just put referee uniforms on, threw flags whenever they wanted. They weren't trained. In, well before the day. They weren't of, trained in refereeing. I doubt. I doubt there's really been much improvement. <laughs> well, in the last that would be years. one area where Eric, there's not been Eric, much. Yeah, Eric has been involved for a few years now. So, um, everyone's favorite SBMSA referee. <laughs> I, I agree. Yeah. Yeah. So, so how do we go from two to four teams? What year was that? Cumble two. two. They may have been two. Cumble two. I mean, we, I, I, had, I mean, literally. There was too many Cumble people. one was yeah. the New Year's Day, and actually, I think New Year's Day was our day for probably the first eight to ten years. Yeah, there it were there were forty guys. Day. It was like twenty on nineteen or twenty okay. on twenty one. The first one was just twenty guys about on either side. It's kind of how we do the lines. Yeah, and, and it was sent out like two yeah or, two or three. And then we the we, we got interest. How do I do it? How do I do it? And then we drew the lines. And we had about, so year two was 17. We actually said no to a bunch of people. Yeah. Because we said, okay, teams would be 17. And, and the West 20. won a game in year two. I doubt it. No. They did. The I was West. on that team. The West. West. They the beat West. The West. What? The West, West. game. The West beat the North in the playoff round of a combo two. Yes, they did. Yeah. I was on that team. So, some of us can, can you edit that out? <laughs> <laughs> For real, that uh, happened. Forever. But I, I, but I, but I, I'm pretty oh sure God. that the flyover in year four um, of the all flyover? of the, of all of the, yeah, yes. the, the the biplane, multiple the years of flyovers. Well, the the, the first, no, yeah, uh, fl- flyover. I think that the the Ryan's may have um, orchestrated. It, we need to bring that back. It, well, I don't know how we make that. Yeah, they knew. They knew I, a guy. I had a guy. I got. I got. I got a guy. I got a pilot. I got a guy. I mean, I'm not asking for a B-52 or, or a B-2 or whatever it is, but well, I think we did. It was for real. Flying Fortress would be. Yep. Yeah, Buzz the Tower, just come on in. I, yeah, so really quick, one, one of the things that I like, I was always passionate about 
playing Pacambo on New Year's Day on the championship. Like, we are going to compete with the best games on TV. <laughs> and the every every year, hold on, let me finish my story. On every year, December 1st, the though? amount of um, family show, people consuming, right. celebrating New Year's Eve made for a very rough, like, people, either you had half your team there or... Yeah. Uh, age. That's part of the dedication. And then, so I think a Smalling became commissioner and said, I've got a ski trip, need to move this. <laughs> and, and and then it just became, they, yeah, I, I love that it's not on New Year's Day, right? And now all those softies move out of the neighborhood. Shh. Oh. So it's weird. It was Ty's party at first. <laughs> An important Moscow. So that is, that's fantastic. Well, listen, I appreciate this. I do want to go to overtime. So we've talked a lot of good stories and the overtime topic is uh, the best or your funniest moment with WMC. So Paul, we'll go to you first. All right. So my, my, my first funniest moment uh, will be, okay. So the original six of us were like, okay, we're kind of getting tired. We gotta, we gotta, uh, we gotta find somebody that will eventually take our spots. And so, we were, you know, trying to find people. We were tired. Of, yeah, we were tired. Each of our positions. And so, um, like I was doing, I did the original website. It's like, what What am I doing doing that? It was awesome. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it's like, okay, so we got to find some people. And so we're, we, we find five or six guys that are willing to take, take or willing to be interested and, and, um, we we set up this big okay we're gonna have um you know big dinner los tios and um you know we need to take a, a board photo that we can put up on the website you know make it look nice so you know please wear coat and tie and come dressed up and um so all the new guys show up in coat and tie dressed up and wearing you know shorts and t-shirts and um I will tell you that that tradition lives on. It We've got, got a picture of that. <laughs> I think that may need to go on the website, or yep. at least uh, yeah, we, on our on our social media. Yes. Yeah. So that's awesome, Jeff. How about you? Best funniest moment? Funniest is tough. I, again, there's been so much has happened over the years. Uh, amount of times Jake and I've sat together just in a dining room till the wee hours of the night, looking through catalogs to pick out what fabric and color of pecan bowl gear and it just it just a lot of just things like uh, shutting down happy hours at three in the morning until the last guy left and cleaning and the last two to leave the pool uh like it just all that stuff just resonates but the best the best thing is the lasting like i've heard of guys moving into the neighborhood because of the men club moving in the neighborhood but not wanting to leave the neighborhood so like I'm going to move, but it has to be in the neighborhood and I'm going to stay on like, so, and then just, uh, the impact of giving and all the stuff we've done, just half a million dollars, all of the stuff that just paying it forward. We're very blessed. We're very lucky. And just to see what has happened. It's awesome. Like well, this thing's not going anywhere. But so, Jeff, to, to, add, to add on to that, it's, it's the, I'd hate to say copycat, but there are a lot of groups that have tried to start what we have done that are, I mean, there's, that's the best compliment there it, it, that it is. is i mean town lake has a men's club um they have a football gridiron games they uh memorial Rumble creek has Rumble creek which Not Memorial Ford's whatever they they've got a softball tournament they've got a men's club. i mean like that is flattery that i went to the Rumble creek to do what we're club. trying to do went to their very first board meeting yeah. they invited me and said hey how'd y'all do it and it's weird their pillars are Youth programs, education, and neighbors in need. Like, they just, it was a. It's like the they've been, or they, they've been again, to Paul's website. It's a great compliment. <laughs> like, but back to the bigger thing, they're paying it forward too. It's, it's, yeah. it's, it's, that's what's really, really cool. So, a, a couple, I'm going to have to call this out. So, Jeff's early pecan bowl emails. So, I was trying to convince my wife that I needed to play in pecan bowl two because we were out of town for pecan bowl one. And Jeff had sent out this email and I forwarded it to my wife and I said, she was like, you need to play in this just so you can continue to get these emails. And so, you know, call out for, for Jeff. And, and one, one old school, like this, for me, this was one of the all-time greatest Washer Fest last year. Like, 
for an old school guy to finally win a pecan bowl? I mean, no, a wash fest. Hey, and hold on, we it's green classic. Okay, Man, let's stop. It's His like Ed's gonna swallow like, that. Like, <laughs> hey, you know, I, just, stop. Hey, stop, <laughs> stop, 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 stop. Go on. Okay. No, no, go, yeah, no, not yet. Go ahead, Christine. Christine, not you can be the outtakes, Christine. Yeah, um, <laughs> go ahead, John. Oh, hold on. You can be in the outtakes. I, 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 I have, best, a, I have a, smoke. I have a best Thanks. and funniest. So real quick, best was during Hurricane Harvey, a crew of us going back into Yorkshire and literally floating a canoe into someone's house. They were handicapped, and I don't know if you, either of you guys were there, but carrying someone, someone down and putting them in their wheelchair in a canoe awesome. and floating it out to dry ground. Probably awesome. the best giving back moment of, because they, they were flooded in. I mean, we had several I, things that we did like that. Um, funniest moment is little known. There's about, all of us are probably near 50 now that had a, what we call the Wilchester middle-aged swingers. It was a softball team. <laughs> it softball team. So, so what do you, what that do was you like the you? office uh, gym. Yeah. Well, so <laughs> I'm just gonna tell you that, like, that, like the, 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 no, no, the, literally the funny, the fu the funniest thing that has ever happened uh, as oh, part of this. Don't tell that story. Yeah, I am. So, I, that, no, you don't want to tell it. All right, I do. So, the first, the first week, the about, we have. 23 guys or something that come out for a, a 10, 10 guy softball team. Like, Oh my gosh, this is too many people, whatever. Well, we all have shirts and everything. Um, and about nine people go down with blown hammies, quads. Things, yeah. yeah. It happens. Body parts. Yeah. I don't so, think it's so, so the second week, uh, we, we play a team and we get smoked by the first team that it, it is a team of, um, they're they're deaf. Okay, uh, it's not a joke. They they really were. So we are short players. We are short players because so many people have gotten injured. So Jeff Gentile is playing left center field, and we have our pickup player from the team that just got through killing us is playing right center field. And there's a fly ball that's kind of in between them, and Jeff tries to call him off. <laughs> Let's just say, <laughs> I'm not, I, the, I mean, you're John. You're laughing. I mean, it's. I it's, know where this is going. Okay, well, I mean, it's not going to go well. I, it's not I, ending I, well. It, it's not. It's not ending well. Let's just say that the guy cut in front of Jeff. He caught the ball. Jeff's a little upset with him. He's yelling at him. I called it. I called it. I called it. The guy turns around. I guess he can read lips, and he's like, "I couldn't hear you," but. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so that is that is my. So did you is, win? Uh, uh, we did win that game yeah. because we had some pickups from the team that had just smoked us. But oh that it by far. And Jeff, you'd be lying if that's not one of your funniest moments ever. <laughs> you just didn't want to say it. <laughs> what Jake said. I mean, I. Oh my God. So um, yeah, anyway, we've had some. Great, I, we've had. I saw my middle aged swingers super thick cotton. Absolutely. Sure, like, sure. like, was it before Drife it was invented? Is that how old we are? Yeah, it was. It was, no, like, it was, it was. A wolf? It was. I think coat. it was maybe 50 50. Oh Holly, my Holly God. Cotton. It's the worst shirt Under, ever. Under Armour had wasn't Scratch. even around it. And it We're was, playing it's, softball it was, it's, it's, right oh now, God. like right in this weather, right now. In, yeah. In, a, in, a in 50 /50. it. Yes. Yeah. So, if anybody wants to bring that back, call us up. We're in. Take Here, la last funny story. Hold on, hold on. No, no. Oh Last funny story. Last funny. And just go ahead. Hit it. it just and so in one of the first agendas, I had this note that said, "Bring an old guy event." <laughs> so that was these guys obviously got our agenda. Fan <laughs> oh my god! And now I get emails saying, "Hey Jeff, can you oversee?" The old guy <laughs> event. So I don't know what happened, but if you're in the 38 to 42 range and you're thinking, I'm young and cool right now. Um, give it 10 years. Yeah, give it 10 years, dog. 
<laughs> you're you're gonna be at the old guy event. So, oh, all right, go ahead, close Listen. it up. You guys, thank you so much for being here, and thank you for all the folks uh, watching or listening. Um, this is again has been a, an incredible podcast, and uh, we're just so happy to be a part of this organization. Uh, this is a really, really stark reminder of why I'm so committed and why so many others are committed because of uh, what you guys started. So um, for those of you who are watching, I, I want to encourage the old guys or the young guys to come out, be a part of the WMC this year. We've got a first event on August 22nd that is going to be at the pool and we have our whole calendar. We're going to pay for the neighborhood and you know, let everybody know all the events that are going on. So this is not just because you have kids that are in elementary school. Uh, it certainly, you know, uh, is a, is a large part of our, our group, but to get involved, to meet guys, you guys just, you know, whoever just moved here, um, it's, it's a great way to meet people. It's a great way to, to make lifelong friends. Um, I love the stories and, and so guys, uh, cheers. Uh, thank cheers. you again. Thanks for having us. Yeah. Yes, thank absolutely. you. Absolutely. Appreciate and, what you guys uh, have done. Doing good. Thank you all guys. Do for, to doing good. To doing all right.